family-owned shop in Loganville, Sosby's Garage for all your automotive repair needs. We service all makes and models, Ford and domestic. We repair engines, alternators, brakes, alignments, AC systems, and more, using certified technicians with over 90 years of combined experience. We also offer same-day service for some repairs. Sosby's Garage, 200 Bay Creek Road in Loganville. Dependable, honest, and fair. Look us up on Google or Facebook. We'll take good care of you. Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett studio inside the Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel, it's time for Case in Point, presented by Paradigm Security Services. We are the cornerstone of security in the Southeast. Hey, everybody. Welcome again to Case in Point, presented by Paradigm Security Services and brought to you in part by Sosby's Garage, located in Loganville, Georgia. Go see John, 678-825-2127. He'll take care of you, and the honesty is the best policy and the only policy. I'm your host, Rick Strawn, and the president of Paradigm Security Services, and we're excited to be with you today on Business Radio X. We are coming to you from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio, located in the beautiful Sinesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel in Duluth, Georgia. Each week we plan to feature businesses and people in the Atlanta area, especially those that serve Gwinnett County. While all businesses have security concerns, not all are about our physical security, and we will touch on that and all related aspects of security through the course of each show. Our guest today, I'm very happy to have Mr. Louis Lou Solis, Jr. He is the Chief Deputy of Operations with the Gwinnett County Sheriff's Department. Glad to have you, Lou. Glad to be here. I've been wanting to get you in here for a while to kind of talk about our county and what's going on, law enforcement and uh, I love talking with the law enforcement because it just it brings me back home to I feel like I'm right back in the car again. Um, let's start out like I usually do with who is Lou Solis? Well, uh, how'd you get here? What got you into this occupation? Well, I, I'm from Brownsville, Texas. My uh, home state. A lot of people, they, they ask where Brownsville is at, and I just, I say the south tip of Texas. Any further, you're going to be swimming. Exactly. So, but I... Uh, I grew up there in Brownsville, and uh, I ended up, uh, I wanted to be a police officer, and my dad uh, was a police officer, and uh, he told me that uh, I, when I graduated, he said, go to college, and uh, you know, that we can take it from there, and I, uh, I, I said, well, I'm ready to go now, and he's like, no, <laughs> you, you need to grow up some, so I went ahead, and I said, well, I'll join the military, so I joined the military, and uh, I did 20 years. I sp- Thank you I, for your service. I appreciate it. And I did, uh, I went ahead and retired out of Fort Benny, Georgia, out of 3rd Ranger Battalion. That's a specialized uh, special operations unit. Uh, and when we left, uh, when, when I re- retired from there, my wife also retired out of Fort Benning. And we were leaving and going back to D.C. And uh, my wife uh, was offered a job here at the uh, she was going to be a professor at Emory, and then the CDC came up and asked her if she wanted to go there, and and uh, she's a she's a doctor at the CDC. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. So, so she's we, still providing a lot of service. She's providing a lot of service, especially today. Yeah, I know that's right. Well, and and you yourself, you uh, you I know that you've been up in Brazelton. That's where I first met you. I I was in Brazelton, uh, but when I first retired out of the military, I. Uh, I ended up going to Marietta Police, and I was in Marietta Police, and and, and at one time we had thought about going back to D.C., so I had uh, I tried out for the uh, CAT team, the counter-assault mm-hmm. team for the Secret Service. Uh, I got hired there, and uh, and then from there I I ended up uh, going to the st- I ended up going somewhere else, and then uh, <laughs> and and then when I came back, I uh, I went to uh, I went to Brazelton. And uh, at Brazelton, I was taking a break, and, and I was really there just to help them build a, a shooting range. And what ended up happening was my wife said, hey, this is great having you back instead of overseas, so stay here. You know, you were chief of detective, I believe, right? I was the, uh, I was the assistant police chief uh, yeah. towards the end, uh, or I say towards the end. Uh, is almost, I was there almost 12 years, uh, and I think the, uh, probably about nine years I was the assistant police chief. 
Fantastic. Um, yeah, and I, I thank Terry Isco. He's, he's the chief, and uh, uh, he, he let me do a lot of stuff there and, and change the department around with uh, with his guidance. And uh, and I did pretty good, and, and the sheriff, uh, Sheriff Butch Conway, had, uh, had seen that. Uh, and I think he he took a, a liking to what I did there, and he asked me if I wanted to come to the sheriff's office. Uh, and then the fourth time, I said yes. So, well, I know, and I know that when you're when you're in a place and you're doing something you love to do, it's hard to change. And but a lot of times those changes are some of the best things that ever happened to us. And I know that uh, I'm familiar with the job that you've done in the sheriff's department. You've done an extremely good job. I appreciate and that. You're welcome. Uh, I've got a lot of friends over in those areas and law enforcement today, and both Gwinnett PD and Gwinnett SO, and uh, I've never heard a bad word about you, at least that I'll repeat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> appreciate that. Lou, yeah, really. Let me ask you, Lou, um, you know, you're running for the position of Gwinnett County Sheriff uh, since Butch has decided to finally retire and go and enjoy his life for the rest of it which I'm glad to see he's going to be having some downtime. Uh, he's a good man. What made you decide that you wanted to be the sheriff? Well, uh, I, I will tell you that uh, you know I have a vested interest in uh, becoming the sheriff of Gwinnett County. Uh, I've lived here in uh, Gwinnett for over 20 years. Uh, and, and my thing is, I, I look at it this way. I, I did 20 years in the military and I was protecting our country. And I figured, hey, you know, what what better thing to do than you know get out and become law enforcement and protect the community and i think uh, uh from the police side was was awesome because you're you know you're in charge of of one town uh and then all of a sudden this the sheriff's office and is, is in charge of the whole county and i thought man this is this is something i can do uh in, in the ranger battalion it, it, they've taught me a, a lot of leadership skills uh, you know how to lead by example, lead the way. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's our motto in the Ranger Battalion: Rangers lead the way. And, and that's one thing that I wanted to do is, uh, you know, show people that hey, I, I can do this. This is this is. Uh, you've got a good team. It, it, it's it's pretty uh, it's pretty easy. But I, I guess I just want to make sure that I protect the citizens of Gwinnett, and I think I'm pretty qualified to do that. Uh, but at the same time, I, I not only do I want to protect the citizens, but I want to help the inmates that are in the jail uh, to be more productive citizens. Well, they've got to come back out into society, hopefully, at some time. Well, absolutely, and that's what we're trying to do. That's what, well, that's what the sheriff has been trying to do for a while, and, mm -hmm. and one of the programs he has is the GRIP. Uh, and Fantastic my, program. Yeah, it's it's a great program. Uh and I, I, it's the uh, the Gwinnett Reentry Intervention Program, and I will tell you he's done a great job with that. Uh, and so the thing is, you know, he's got the dog program, and and I just came up with a veterans program. But my thing is, I'm trying to help the inmates that want to be helped to get them back into the streets and be a productive, you know, citizen and a citizen in Gwinnett County. Well, and you talk about your qualifications. I know that. Um my director of, of oper uh, the security has uh, gone through the FBI Academy and small world. I know you went through the FBI National Academy, and both of y'all were in the same class. Yeah, class 237. It was, uh, it was a great class, and uh, it's a great uh, – less than 1% get picked to go to the uh, FBI National Academy, and, and uh, I was fortunate to, to be picked, uh, and uh, it was a great uh, – great lesson great le learning experience i was going to say you learn a lot and especially about leadership and which i guess brings us up to you know why are you uniquely qualified you know, more so than anyone else running to particularly to to have this position well uh, i i think right off the bat i'm the guy running the place right now exactly so uh, i mean I, I think that qualifies me a lot especially you know, especially with this virus that uh, that just hit us so uh, i think this is when you learn you know someone under pressure you know how does he react and uh, and i i think right now my boss is pleased of how we're doing it uh and and the the, the team that i have right now is doing a great job uh so the day-to-day -day operations but not only the jail those two courthouses that uh, that we oversee it's uh, there's a lot of people going in and out so there's a lot of activity uh, i mean and and that doesn't include our staff. I mean, we have close to 900 people on our staff. So, uh, I mean, I'm a retired Army Ranger, 
You know, I, I like I said, I've led people. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, in the battalion, we had close to 1,200 people. And, I, and at a couple of times, I was in charge of those 1,200 people. Uh, I've, I was, I, I say it's a small thing, but I was class president of my, uh, of my class in North Central Georgia. Uh, and I, I just think that my leadership uh, of what I'm doing right now it gives me, especially being under the Sheriff Butch Conway. I mean, he's got 24 years. I mean, he's got to be doing something right for 24 years. It should be an awesome in, instructor and. Oh yeah, I mean, he's a, he's a great mentor. Man, he's a great mentor. I mean, it, it, the, this, the things that I learn from him are every day. They're not just, you know. So I mean, and we have contact every day, and we're seeing each other, and and you know, hey, don't don't forget to do this. Don't forget to do that. I mean, that's. To me, that's an awesome. Uh, I mean, people pay for that. I'm getting it for free, yeah, yeah. Really. and getting paid to do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting paid yeah. to do it. You know, I know. And you talk about the leadership. I, I can tell you, we've. You know, I've got a hundred people on our staff. Uh, just give or take one or two, depending upon how many come or leave today. But basically, a hundred people. And I can imagine with the number of people that you're dealing with, you know. It takes a lot. It takes a lot of responsibility. It takes a lot of knowledge. Well, and and the and ability. Well, you know, you can go, and I've said this to a lot of people. We can go to a. You can go to every school. Uh, matter of fact, I, I went to. I was on the Gilly trip, uh, the Georgia International Law Enforcement Exchange Program to Israel. Uh, you learn a lot of stuff when you're with, you know, these police officers from different areas uh, and then when you go to another country you're learning something totally different mm -hmm. so to get that experience is it's great but I will tell you to actually do it day to day and, and my leadership style is I can't sit in an office uh, I have to go to the back I have to uh, and when I say to the back I got to go to the back of the jail to to talk to the people that work for us you got to take care of the people especially right hands now. on yeah you got to be a hands-on guy but at the same time you know you got leaders let them do their jobs give them what they need and stay out of their way but at the same time show that hey man you're there and you and and i care i mean i really do care you got to not only do know the faces you know know their names you know uh, it, it's easy to say what you want to be but you know to go and hey let's do it well, and the ability to, and we talked about it earlier, the ability to not micromanage. Uh, believe in the people that you've got. Know what their abilities are and trust them to do their job. That, that is a special, unique quality for people to be able to back off and let people do the job. Well, and, and that's it. And I think the sheriff, uh, when he brought me on board, one of the things he said was just, you know, I did a 90-day assessment. Uh, I walked around and, and we made a f you know some changes to make sure that we had the right person in the right places and we re re reorganized uh, how we had the courtroom set uh, the the person at the court set up uh, we reorganized how we had some of the people at the jail set up uh, but we put the right people in charge and, and let them do their job and right. just give them guidance the right people in the right seat on the bus yeah yeah well you know <laughs> I know that you have a vision. What's your vision of Gwinnett Sheriff Department in the future, moving forward? Well, I mean, we look, uh, Sheriff Butch Conway, 24 years. You know, you, you can't just jump into his boots and say, "Hey, uh, you know, I'm new sheriff in town. We're going to do it a different yeah, way." Yeah, you can't do that. And I, and my thing is, i you know, he, he's a great guy, great vision. Uh, my vision, of course, is I just want to. I I really do want to be one of the. I want to be one of the top. Uh, sheriff's offices in the country and uh and and the sheriff has has gotten us there which yep, conway so. has has put us there at that level and and i think that uh yeah, i want to make sure that that i'm that guy that oversees it from here on and 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 not screw it up <laughs> <laughs> but the, but my vision is i want to see the i want to see people here and uh, i want to see the citizens of here i want them to know that hey that we're here for them and uh and it's not just about you know the jail it's a, you know it's, it's helping the inmates you know how do we help the inmates come out better uh what program do we need to uh to have uh, to help them you know be more productive but but uh, i just i i want to 
I just want to be make sure that we have the right programs in place, uh, like the barracks, uh, the, the veterans program we made. Uh, I just want to have the top programs to help people get back into society and to make sure that Gwinnett knows, because we have a lot of diverse people in Gwinnett. I mean, I'm Hispanic. Uh, my, my family's from Mexico. Uh, so I, I want to make sure that we help all the different people that we have here in Gwinnett. Well, and you have also, in addition to the jail, you have the courts. And, and we have the courts, and I would tell you that, uh, you know, I, I don't know what the other courts are doing. I don't know how. Uh, I, I know that, uh, you know, when we started taking temperatures a, a couple of days later, hey, let's let's take over the courts and do the same thing there, take care of the people, because mm-hmm. uh, there's a lot of people coming in and out. I mean, we're se- we secure the uh, that whole building and also the annex building uh, where the juvenile courts are. So there's a lot of moving parts that are, that are going around. Uh, I, I want to make sure that the people know that, you know, my vision is for Gwinnett County. It's not about Lusalis. Uh, it's about Gwinnett County, and we got to help the people. I mean, one of the things we just did, we just saved the, the sheriff. Just uh, the sheriff's office just saved six point eight million dollars. It went back to the county. That's a big. That's a big hit. That's a big hit, and it and it went back to Gwinnett County. Uh, of course, you don't see the the banners, and you don't see the the people talking. You know, and I say the people, you don't see uh, none of the commissioners has mentioned that. You know, I mean, my thing is, hey, we're trying to make sure that we're doing the best job possible for the county, and be economically sound. Sound, absolutely. Well, I know that you know. How can you? think of how to work how can you get the sheriff's department to engage and connect more with the people in the community or so, y'all, how are y'all doing that well like i said i think one of the programs that i want to do is and it's not really a program i think what i want to do is i uh, like i said maybe do some different things uh i, I want to actually put some people in the community areas, uh, the different back ethnic backgrounds in the community, uh, you know, the Asian, the Hispanics, you know, uh, I want to make sure that, uh, that we represent everybody. Uh, you know, we don't, uh, we have a couple people that speak Korean. We have a couple people speak Vietnamese, Japanese. I mean, it's just, you know, Spanish, uh, Portuguese, uh, French. So my thing is we want to be able to send the people out and that's their job their job is to go do community relations and at the same time myself i gotta drive around and gotta go to the different uh, you know not only the people but the businesses go to the businesses and show our face and say hey we're here for you what can we do better now we not may, might be able to change it that day but if we have an open dialogue what can we do to help you and, and we'll try to make sure that we can. Well, really focusing on that, that's, that's different than most SO sheriff's offices do. Um, a lot of times you have your local police, your county police, the police part of it does. A lot of people don't know really the difference between the police and the SO. But a lot of the SO, they just spend, you see them around the courts, you see them around the jail. You see them driving down the highway, but you don't see them interacting that much. And I think that's an, uh, a fantastic idea is to get out in the community and really spend a lot of time interacting and let people know who the sheriff's office is, who who you are, uh, what your what your mission is, and uh, what your culture is. And and that's one of the things I, I would tell you that you know you just mentioned the police department. We got a great you know the Gwinnett County Police Department. Great people in there. Great leaders. Uh, this is great officers. I mean, I see the officers. I interact with the officers on the Gwinnett PD. Great guys. Fantastic PD. Yeah, and 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 I will tell you that you know when we go to the uh, you know the, the different police departments that we have here in Gwinnett, uh, you know they're all run by great chiefs. I mean, these guys that they've been in law enforcement a long time. Uh, we have a great communication set up between them. The sheriff has set that up, uh, but but we talk to the, sh- the chiefs every day. But I want the people to know that, hey, we're not only driving around. We're stopping the car. We're getting out. We're communicating with them. Hey, what can we do? Uh, of course, right now this virus has is that we can't do that right now. Exactly. You know, but, but that's going to pass. Yeah, once and everything, you know, you, you go up a hill and then you come down. So and, and this will pass. Uh, and the thing is, what we'll do is we'll, we'll get out there. And, you know, my thing is 
I don't want to wait till January the 1st. My thing is, hey, let's do it now. Um, you know, mm -hmm. my thing is, and that's what I've been doing, you know, going, uh, and it's not because of election, it's because, hey, I, I've been doing that. I've been going to apartment it's complexes. who you are. Yeah. You know, I, I've been going to the apartment complexes. I've been going to different, you know, talking to different businesses and, hey, you know, the, hey, what can we do in the different parts of town? Uh, we, we don't get to see everybody, but we try to, you know, connect. Well, the important thing is you're out there. We are out there. So, and that, that's the important thing. And, you know, like I say, all this will pass, but uh, this is a great planning time, too. Uh, while people are in this position where they really can't get out and do a lot, this is a great time to do some planning. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. Um, you, now, you were an Army Ranger and everything, so tell me about the program called the Barracks. So the Barracks was something that, uh, that I thought about when I saw the dog program. You know, the, the sheriff's got this dog program, program where the inmates are involved. Uh, and, and, but it works hand-in-hand hand with GRIP, you know, that, uh, uh, that intervention program. But the dog program, it gets the inmates involved, you know, the, and, and, and those people, the, the inmates get to see how it affects. Uh, they, they love it, by the way. Oh, they, they do. And, and, but the thing is, so I thought, okay, Let's get the veterans, and, and let's get uh, let's get these guys in the room. Uh, you know, and, and I will tell you, you walk. It's amazing. I was in there a couple of days ago. I was in there, and when you walk in there, I mean, they're they're ready to come back into society. They need a second chance. Uh, I will tell you, we had a lot of people come in in and out. Uh, uh, I, I won't mention her name, but she's very well known here in, in, the, in the Atlanta area. Uh, her husband uh, owns one of the big teams here. But she came down and she wanted to see what we really do. And the thing is, have the inmates talk to the people. But the, the barracks is one of those things where the inmates come in. Uh, we got people coming up to them from the the VA. We have got people coming in from social. I mean, uh, w whatever social services, something to help these guys out to say, "Hey, man, we got to get you back out in society," and uh, and just that program itself. When you walk in there, uh, they're they're a, they're a unit. They even they even uh, they even made their own coin. Uh, awesome. You walk in there, and they have the murals set up, uh, and each service has their own. You know, the, the Navy, the Marines, uh, the Army, had, uh, the Coast Guard are in there, and the Air Force guys. I just saw one. Uh, the Air Force had the C-130 with a pair of troopers coming out. That was pretty cool. But you walk in there, and, and what I wanted to do with this program is, you know, <clears throat> we're a direct supervision jail. And uh, it, which means there's a deputy in each pod, uh, but in this certain pod, these guys run it. The deputy oversees it, and uh, but these guys get up. They they wake up early. They do their you know the, they do some calisthenics. Uh, they clean up. They're they broken. They're broken down by squads, just like the military. Uh, but they're proud. Uh, they're, they're proud guys. And and I tell them, hey man, I don't care what you're in for. My thing is to try to get you back out into society and start all over and say, hey, because at one point, they were great guys. The military took them. Uh, they made a wrong turn. Now we want to get, get them back on track, try to get the GRIP program involved uh, and some people involved to help these people out to get them back into society. Well, it gives them, you know, gives them something that they know is ahead of them and gives them opportunity. I think that's one of the biggest. Now, a lot of the people that are in jail, they figure they don't have any opportunity. It's just uh, they're going to be back in here shortly anyway. What the hell? But this gives somebody something to look forward to for the outside. Well, and the, the other thing, too, is, you know, we're working with the judges. You know, one of the things is, you know, the, you know, the, the judges have a veterans court, you know, so and they have their program. And one of the things that we did was with, we told the judge, hey, it'd be pretty cool if you had these people that are going through the veterans program or veterans court to make it mandatory to come talk to the barracks, the people in the barracks, you know, say, hey, this is how I got out. It's a great idea. Oh, it's, it's a great idea, and the, the judge, you know, the judge thought that was great. Uh, my thing is, we we are, these programs here, like the drug program, uh, we just opened up the opioid. It's, mm -hmm. it's a brand new uh, opioid for, uh, you know, for, for the people that, that have some problems with addiction. Uh, we're working with drug court, you know, the same thing. Uh, the next the next one we're, we're trying to open is, is the mental health. Uh, the mental health unit is, is you know, that, that's, that's, uh, that's, a, that's a big thing for us. Right we now. have a big deal with, I mean, a lot of people don't realize, and of course, going through leadership and going through the jail and, and, and knowing people on the inside, mental health is a big issue. 
with our jails. It is. Uh, it's a serious problem. Uh, it's it's not only Gwinnett, but it, but across the country. And you know, many inmates that come in, of course, they have you know they, they have mental issues. So that that's why the the barracks, the veterans program, uh, the opioid because the veterans take drugs, and then you got the mental illness. Uh, and the mental illness, or what we're trying to do right now, is we just hired a guy who's got a master's, a deputy who has a master's in mental health. Wow. So what we're doing with him is once we get some more people, we'll open up the mental health pod. And so you got the barracks, the veterans pod, you got the opioid pod, and then you got the mental health pod. My goal is to try to get these three pods to go down to one pod, which is a transitional pod, to get the guys out. So to so funnel them down through and then out into society. Yeah, so so the mental illness, I mean, we, we just got to make sure that we have the right personnel attached to the right office to help on this issue. Uh, and also we're working with our health care provider because uh, they have the mental health uh, pr- uh, the, the doctors in there. But, but that deputy right now is, is working hand-in-hand hand with the, with the health care provider to ensure that the inmates, you know, they get in the right treatment for, you know, for his or her issue. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on in there. Um, yeah. Let's go back to the communication. How do we actually increase the communication and data sharing between different law enforcement agencies? I know going through the Olympics, and then it, we did some changes, and then they went back. And then going through different phases, we improved uh, communication between departments, and then it would backslide again. Well, so How do we get it focused? How do we keep it on it? So I will tell you the data sharing for us – the, the, I, I think one of the biggest things is, you know, the sheriff uh, started having uh, monthly meetings with all the chiefs of police. Uh, so every month at the, at, the, at the sheriff's office, we have a meeting with all the chiefs of police, which include uh, the DA's office and the solicitor's office. Great. Yeah, so th- we sit in there, uh, and the thing is we, we go, you know, who needs what, who, uh, what what information do you have to pass on that, hey, we're seeing each other face-to-face. Uh, they can go over uh, different issues as far as what's popped up in the county or what uh, what the capital is trying to run through, you know, as far as a, a different... Uh, good or bad. Yeah, good or bad. But it, but it pops up there. And, and But we also invite the federal agencies because we have people attached to federal agencies. Uh, myself, I'm on the Joint Terrorism Task Force Executive Board. So, and, and that helps us a lot uh, and also being an na grad national academy grad Mm -hmm. uh, from the fbi so it it opens the door Uh, but also with dea uh, a big one is u.s marshals a lot of people don't know you know you mentioned it earlier about hey what's the difference between the sheriff's office and the and the and the 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 county police yeah and i I will tell you that believe it or not a lot of people they they don't really know but we work hand in hand with the with the the, the county PD a lot, uh, but when the when the warrants come to us, uh, and I'll say this off the data sharing, but when the warrants come to us, when the PD finally releases the warrant, they send it to us. You know, we got a uh, our fugitive squad. I mean, they go after some really bad guys. And uh, we, matter of fact, we helped uh, the the PD the other day, uh, a murder suspect. He's been wanted since uh, 2013. And we we found them in Atlanta, the, and that was by helping the help from the U.S. Marshals. I, I mean, bet that was the day that we were talking at an event, and you said they were after somebody. Yeah, it was pouring down rain, yep. I, and I went out there myself. I went out there at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, we we had help from the Atlanta SWAT, uh, great guy. Uh, they helped us out, and, and it, they they went inside the house, and there was the guy, and but it was all because we have people assigned to different agencies, and we're and we're communicating back and forth as far as data. Uh, hey, you know, you, we have a guy, we think he's here. Can you help us out? So we're always sharing information, and that includes the GBI. Uh, the GBI, uh, uh, they just opened up uh, uh, as far as their they have a program uh, that that does um, for gangs, mm-hmm. and uh, so we're trying uh, uh, we're using that data uh, to to try to catch some of the guys that uh, you know the gang problem here in Gwinnett. So we're using the GBI. Say, hey, w- we need some help, and uh, and th- and they're they're helping. Well, I think one of the biggest things that you know a lot of people don't realize how territorial police departments get. Uh, you know, in their jurisdictional, territorial type stuff. The biggest thing with the communication is to help break that down, get a comfort level 
where people share information and they share it. I mean, just they don't think anything about sharing that information and working together. That's always been a problem in the past of really that having enough communication where that comfort level was to the point that it needs to be. And I know in the Gwinnett County system, and it sounds like what you've really been able to do and, and Butch has been able to do, is develop that comfort level to where everybody really works together. And I think the bottom line is, you know, Sheriff Conway told me day one when I got there, and, and I and it's to this day, and you can ask any chief, but uh, if you ask any chief as far as the sheriff's office, the sheriff made a comment to me saying, hey, anybody from the one of the police departments needs any help, give it to them. And uh, it goes for the PD, the county PD. Uh, I will tell you the first day, I, the first week I came on the job, I went over there to the PD, the county PD. I took a lot of pizzas over there and said, <laughs> hey, we're here to help. What can we do? Uh, they, they got a new chief, Tom Doran, great guy. He's got a good command staff, uh, and we work really well with them. Uh, when they need our help, they call us. Uh, and and I, I will tell you that there's sometimes they'll, they'll, they'll call and say, hey, you know, uh, back door. They'll say, hey, you know, be ready to help us if we need, and, and we're there. But the, the sheriff put out from day one. Whatever the police departments need, give it to them. Give em. it to them. Help them. And that's, and, and because sometimes you have, like when I was in Braselton, you know, the resources, we don't have that many. You know, Norcross, you know, the smaller departments, they don't have Auburn. They don't have that, that many resources. So one of the things is, hey, help those guys out because it's Gwinnett County. And that's why I say it's not about who's, you know, it's not about that person running the helm. Yep. It's about, hey, man. Let's work together as a team and help each other. Well, it is all about the team. Um, I, last, you know, I, could, I could go on with you for probably another hour, but unfortunately I can't. But one of the things that I do know that we don't need to get out of here without, about, without addressing is how are you addressing keeping the staff and the incarcerated people sta- safe from the, uh, in the jail during this health crisis with this night, COVID-19? Well, I will tell you that, the, that as soon as we started, uh, like I showed you earlier on my board, you know, we, we brought the, uh, the chain of command uh, and we went in there and we started putting everything on the board of what, we, what do we need to do. Uh, one of the things was right at the, right at the get-go is like, hey, man, we have to take care of our personnel. Uh, and one of the biggest things was families first. You know, and if, if a family member has to leave because of daycare or whatever, let's step up and, and help them out. That was priority because family to me is, is, is crucial. Uh, if they're in the game, uh, then they, you, they got your, you know, they'll give you the 100%. Absolutely. So th- that's why you have to make sure that, hey, we think about the deputy. Uh, so my thing was, you know, and it's a hard issue right now because everything's changing, you know. Day to day. Of, yeah, it is. Uh, but I've made sure that we followed the CDC procedures. Uh, the White House, we've had uh, three. We're gonna, about to have one today at one. But the White House, we've had uh, three White House conference calls. Uh, the vice president was on there the other day, uh, you know, giving guidance uh, or what they're doing, uh, and what numbers to call, what people to call. They were also on there. So, you know, they've addressed uh, what to do if you're out of certain items. Uh, I've made sure that the jail, the courthouse, that, you know, that, hey, we're, we're monitoring temperatures. Not only everyone that, so at the, at the jail, we have two entrances, the main door, which includes me too. You, you got to come in the front door, only one entrance, and they'll take your temperature. At the, at the gate, anyone that comes to that gate gets their temperature taken. Okay. Uh, so my thing is, and then, and then inside the building, every department knows to temporarily, hey, man, walk around and, and do random checks on people and see how they're doing. Uh, and th- when the car comes to the gate, if they're delivering an inmate, when they come in, uh, we already know their temperature. But when the officer gets out with the with the person, we sanitize the back seat. And the reason we do that is to make sure that hey man, when you come back or wherever you're at, you know, because if if they have an, if they happen to be on the side of the road and they put some guy in the back seat, you don't know what he's got. Yeah, and they and they and they say okay, we're going to release him. But all of a sudden, next thing you know, the guy don't come to the jail, and, and there's the guy right in the car. You know, it's contaminated. Yep. So we're cleaning the back seats, and we're doing the random checks. Uh, we're making sure we, you know, we make sure that the, all the cars are, 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 are cleaned down. At the courthouse, we're doing the same thing. We're doing the random checks. Uh, everyone coming in, we're screening them, uh, and we're making sure that the, the high traffic areas that we're, that we're 
in in and out every day those areas are being sanitized every 15 minutes uh, and the ones that aren't are every 30 minutes uh, of course right now everyone's having problem with uh, you know hey where do we get the supplies yeah. uh, so today uh, at one o'clock we have uh, the Surgeon General from the and, and White House staff is going to be uh, uh, having the phone conference and, and at that time we'll ask hey you know where do we get the supplies because we're running low on supplies the other thing too is you know we want to make sure that they understand the White House understands it you know they, they talk about medical providers uh, you know they talk about the hospitals but we have to remember that the jail we have inmates and and when you have inmates you have staff uh, so we need those supplies so we got to make sure that the jails are a number one priority as well that we're in there with the with the first responders everybody interacts with them all the way through yeah, and that the courthouse is the same way because we have to bring people. Uh, we're doing video visitations, uh, you know, for the inmates. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're doing emails for them. Uh, so th- uh, I would tell you that was a, a, a top priority as well when this came out. It's like, hey, how do we help these guys? So we worked with our provider, and, and they, they helped us out. Uh, so th- and one of the things was, hey, it's not their fault, so it has to be one of those, you know, no cost, you know, how we help them. Uh, but one of the things that we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that that we that everybody in that building, whether it be the courthouse uh, or the jail, how can we make sure that uh, you know, are we doing our due diligence and to I try to be safe? Yeah, and I tell my staff, look, at this point right now, there is no dumb idea. Uh, we don't have uh, we don't have roll calls. We don't have you know we, we're doing everything by phone. We're doing everything by video. Uh, so one of the, and, and when we have a meeting, it's like hey, no more than you know ten people. We just have a few people come in there, and and the rest of the stuff we pass out. Well, I know this is a trying time. You know, it's, it's, like they say, this too will pass, but uh, it can't get over with too soon for most of us. I know. Well, listen, Lou, I appreciate it so much for you coming on. Um, if anybody wants to talk to you talk to your campaign talk to you about the sheriff's office any of the stuff we've talked about but also as far as uh you running for the the office of sheriff in this county what do they do to get in touch with y'all well i know that the well of course the the facebook page uh, loose lease for sheriff uh that's the facebook page right now Uh, there should be a phone number on there uh we have the push cards uh they're being passed out they also have a a phone number on there but liz carter right now is my campaign manager and uh, we're trying to make sure i mean you know we're, we're working our hours and then at the end of the day which whatever time that may be then we focus on the campaign but my focus right now is uh there's i look at it this way there's no doubt in my mind I'm here till January or till December 31st. My yep. job is to make sure that I give 100% to the sheriff's office. Don't slack off. Uh, and that's why Liz Carter is helping me, making sure that I, at the end of the day, that uh, I remember, hey, man, we're running a campaign, too. <laughs> and that can be hard, especially in the type of job that you do, because your mind pretty well stays busy the whole day. I can tell you from being in law enforcement, when you're there, you get focused you, everything else kind of gets to a blur off to the side and you're focused on what you do well i'm trying and uh, i will tell you that at the end of the day i look at it like this hey my name's luis manuel solis jr you know <laughs> i'm a guy from brownsville texas you know my, my family's hispanic they're we're all you know they're from mexico uh, and i will tell you that uh, i am doing the job right now uh, I think the the boss right now is happy, and uh, the people that know me know what I do. Uh, that's the best thing that I you know I'm I'm giving you everything I can, and uh, I would tell you that uh, if the people that don't know me, hey, ask the people that that you know that do that that do or that have heard of me. Mm-hmm. They'll tell me. Ask me, I'll tell you about it, and I won't tell you all. The, well, I'll tell you everything. <laughs> so, though, but anyway, you know, thanks a lot for coming on. Um, And thank you for joining us on Case in Point, presented by Paradigm Security Services. Uh, If you got car problems, give John Sosby a call at 678-825-2127 and give him a call about your car. Remember, you can join us live every Wednesday at 1130 in the morning, or you can listen to our show anytime you want by going to businessradiox.com, clicking on the Gwinnett Studio, and then click on Case in Point. Join us next week at 11.30 when we will talk with business leaders and about their businesses and related security issues in today's world. Thanks to my guest, Luis Elise, and that's S-O-L-I-S. 
and um, you know it's for the producers Mike and again I'm Rick Strawn and remember at Paradigm Security Services we cover more than just your assets <laughs>